Um, I guess we'll go ahead and get going. Uh, I just let him know just to let Mr. Becker in if he does uh, arrive. So okay. um, hopefully if he does, we won't have to go back too far. But, uh, you know, so I've got some questions that have been posed to you, Ms. Adrian, and I will do my best. But hopefully we can circle back if I fail to do a good job on that. And we can talk about that. So I know you guys weren't at the meeting. So I wanted to maybe take a moment and just see if you want me to go back to the PowerPoint presentation or if you had a chance to read it. You said you have it. I, I just have, you know, the numbers. Okay. I was going to the numbers trying to figure out. Um, from what I'm seeing in your numbers is your expenses increased 300, almost 343000 and your income um, went down. So my main point here is why are your expenses going up that drastically yeah. in such a short amount of time? Yeah, so, and I'll talk a little bit about that. Some of those are one-time expenses, so the grant monies that we've gotten. But I thought this but said I, so that you minus out, out the grant Right, funds. and so I don't know if you're looking at that or this. Well, let's look at this right okay. now. Because so this, well, this one will have the one-time funds in it. This, I did my best for the sake of the presentation. Kind of. Yes, summarize it. Summarize it, right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so in work in progress, you guys never budget work in progress, but there's a lot of money being spent there. Yeah. Um, how is that? So this is an accounting question I've had for our clerk and our clerk treasurer. And the way it's been explained to me is that the work in progress is that those projects that are planned for in that year that um, we, for example, this last year we had a golf at the golf course we had a pump that went out and it was a significant cost to us and so they build it in work in progress and then they'll, they'll apply it to that particular department so if it's golf course they'll apply to our golf course if and, and admittedly this is an area i stand to learn a little bit more from if we if i could get some questions answered i might take from this conversation and do some research and get back with you but the other one was also when we hired it our, um, we didn't have IT, we contracted IT services. And then when we brought IT on, the clerk put his time, because it's shared time. Uh, we have a number of employees who share their their um, salary with other departments. And so she was lumping all of his time into work in progress each year. And I asked the question, well, why are we doing that? And she supposedly, she made a comment that she changed that for this next year, 2024. So we'll see a huge amount, probably about 100,000 go back into their respective departments and be charged. They would, he would bill his time to that. So okay. it, was a, it was a setup issue on one aspect, and other ones it's those unanticipated projects that come in that we don't have it budgeted that we need to pull either out of contingency or we have to bill to that respective department later. So when you, when you bill to this respective department later, why are we still seeing in previous years such huge actual? You mean I mean, you know. like in, 2020, we see 287,000, and then in 2021, we see 100, yeah. and almost 153,000. That was a question I had for, in fact, I was just informing our mayor that we have, uh, we're going through an audit right now, 2020. So we deal with our fiscal years, it's a partial year, right? Three right. months in the previous year, and then nine months of the next year. So you said October, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. So when you hear me say fiscal year, I'm saying the year ended. So if I say fiscal year 21, that means we're 20, 20, 20, 21. Is that helpful? No, I was also going last the end. Of the yeah, okay. I just want to make sure because there, there tends to be some talk that happens here just by practice, but not everybody's necessarily mm -hmm. accustomed to that like that practice. So, so that we're going through the 2020, 2021 budget audit now, um, and I have the same question of our clerk treasurer. Hey, why are we? Why? Why this should be told about? This should be zero at the end of the year, and. Uh, unfortunately, we're not able to get question that question answered at this time. We're working on trying to get that answer. So that's a question we have as well. Okay, and then under um, clerk treasurer expense account, you have money budgeted, but you don't have anything spent. And that seems can, kind of, um, well, at least last year you didn't spend much. And we're, um, um, this is at the bottom of the first page. Page two. On uh, what year? Oh, so we're on 2020, 2022. Like, yeah. you budget about 9,000 to, well, the last two years about 9,000 um, you budgeted. You, you spent money in 2020, but not 2020. 
Two. Right. Okay, let me get the, yeah. <laughs> the years, right? Right, so if we have Okay, we'll so you, you budgeted, now. now you doubled your budget um, for 2023. That doesn't make sense to me. Yeah, so, and again, so getting into some of these, uh, it's, a, it's about how the clerk treasurer allocates those funds. So the general fund transfer that was coming in was coming in um, to help offset some of these costs. So I don't know if she didn't charge that. Um, it's a good question, really. But the kind of where we're at right now, likely the expense increases are related to some of our increases that we've seen across the majority of our sector, which is insurance. Yeah. Insurance rates went up. Um, and then wages. Well, I mean, look at the wages you have budgeted. You know, 69.47, and then you have all your employee expenses, mm -hmm. and then purchase purchase services, so contract labor, I assume. And yeah, it, 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 it doesn't make sense why that number would have been doubled for 2023. And the other thing I was going to say is, and this is a question I have, is maybe the reason it wasn't ever charged is because it should have been done at the end of the year and it never was, because a general fund transfer usually happens at the end of the year. But you can't tell me what she's planning. I'm just saying that that was my, that would have been a question I would have asked her, is what I'm getting at. Okay. Do you think we can get that answer maybe? I would love to give you the answer, but I can't even get it right now. Okay, so. All right, and then um, everything else looks legitimate until we get over here to the police department. What page is that? Mm -hmm. Four. Five. Four. 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 Okay, so Adrian was telling me you're hiring another person, I assume. We have a hiring freeze right now. We're just one person short. Mm -hmm. So it's now, right now, they're running a six man department. But uh, the intent and the hope would be to get back to a seven man department. So it was budgeted for seven? Correct. Seven budget. See, I, I've got to touch on that sure. again because I really didn't want to hijack the meeting the other day. But um, I know Jeremy Garrett. Mm -hmm. They're friends of mine. Mm -hmm. And um, when I called them up to tell them that you guys had a position open and that um, he should apply for it, which he did, um, we were under the assumption that you guys were minus one man. And so you were going to have to go down to 20 hours. And I think it was a woman, actually. She went to the county, right? Yeah, but even before, yeah, so even before that, we were struggling with meeting our 24 hour. But then I found out later that you turned around and you adjusted one of your other employees to go to a resource officer at the school. So why didn't you just come out in the open during that time and explain everything, you know? Well, not, not, the, we've always had a resource officer at the school, mm -hmm. and that changes, especially as we lose, go through attrition through our the police department, and so new officers will step up. And one of the challenges when we stepped up before, the officer that was doing it was, maybe didn't have a family or didn't have insurance, and then we had a new officer came in that took insurance, so our cost to put that person in there went up. But we've always had an officer there, okay. to my knowledge. And you know, I've been here five years and we've had an officer there. Okay, because the way the story was presented to me was you guys at the same exact time was moving positions around a little bit, and but you were only advertising to the public that it was because you were short one man. Do you remember why they went to the 20 hour day a week or 20 hour day uh, I think the, the biggest reason was the uh, with the number of police we had even with full force uh, it was really difficult for the officers to get any time off oh yeah because they were working around the clock they were accumulating time overtime. they weren't getting their time we were working overtime and we thought the best thing to do was to cut back that four hours during that early morning time you know so that at a time when there's little or nothing going on and and then that actually allowed um, the police chief to you know designate some time off for these people to give them the time that they should give them and shorten the overtime less of the overtime that was the main reason so um if this does pass is that your objective to at least get one or two well i think that's part of our hope is is that in the continued dialogue with the community when we set the parameters in which the local option tax would fund, we're hopeful that the community will support that action. Well, I gotta be honest with you, my kids are teenagers and they talk, right? And uh, 
we actually moved here from um, Spirit Lake Priest River School District, and my kids at the time were in school, and so my son's still in contact. We got a call yesterday that one of the children committed suicide. So I don't know what's going on. Well, I can tell you what's going on because I dealt with it with the library, right? It's just all the information they're absorbing, like whether it's TV, books, friends, whatever, music, right? And it's really, it's really getting difficult. Well, and, so, and, and we know that the police department is one of the major faces of our community. Mm -hmm. And I don't know that there's anybody on this council or in the staff that aren't willing to fight all the way down to the point of which we have no other option to make sure we keep that. Yeah. Uh, and that's been one of my big pushes is what not only to support the police department, but to get them that livable wages. Uh, just a little bit of history as far as the police department. We lost an officer mm -hmm. and decided not to hire another one, went on the freeze, you know, um, thinking that, you know, for two things, two reasons, we don't want to hire one. And then, you know, this thing doesn't pass and we've got to say, sorry, you got to go now after six months. Smart. But the other thing is we thought we would, you know, save some money. Well, it, ultimately, we didn't know how much we're saving because it's turning into more oh, overtime. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, high tech's a wonderful thing. Uh, so what are you going to do when the FETNO grant money or whatever they call that, the the, oh, from the, from yeah, the what are you going to do when that runs out? Um, how are you going to support <coughs> your resource officer, or at least the percentage that you have to pay in? So we pay, uh, I think the school district pays about $30,000. They do. And... Well, it's 36. 36, yeah. yeah. Um, well, we don't have it here. We, so that covers their portion of ownership. The county pays, I think, 12000 and then we pay the rest. So for us, that would be a question that has to be discussed. Right. I mean, there, here's the thing. We're not here with necessarily a lot of answers to where we're going. We're here with a lot of questions like yourselves about where we're gonna go. I'll do my best to try to go through the numbers. I admittedly don't get into the numbers. It wasn't until this last year when I realized I needed to that I started getting more into the numbers. And, and then structurally, if you think about the way we're set up, you know, when you think about a city administrator, which is my title, it's not in the true sense of a city administrator. I'm not over all the departments. I'm only over partial, part of the department. Mm -hmm. So the police chief, the clerk treasurer, the fire chief, the attorney, and the engineer are all also appointed. So they were laterals in, in the org chart. Mm -hmm. So when we look at some of those, I don't have oversight over like the police department. But I work directly with the police chief and the fire department to make sure that we are moving us along the continuum of progress that they need. So I see myself as, a, as an extension of their staff. But so how, for how long have you been down a man? How, for how long have you had only six instead of seven? No, I think it's seven instead of eight. No, Isn't we've it? never had eight. Uh, seven man police department. And we've been down one since I want to say September time frame. Yeah. Okay, so this is the problem I'm looking at. Your your actuals, like in 2021, was 603,000, and your actuals for 22 were 596,000. So right here. 603. I'm looking. Okay, page four. Page four. Um. I I'm. If, if you had all seven men in 21, I don't see the reason why your budget would increase um, 100, almost 108,000. Yeah, for, that, so this is that those one-time expenses are brought back in. So the ARPA dollars are budgeted here. So when I can go through what the ARPA was that was budgeted for for the police. So like when I, when I look, and then this doesn't make any sense to me either, is or maybe you added these two together to come up with this seven hundred thirty-four thousand. Right. Is that so, what you did? So what I do is I go through and I I add up. I think there's a handful of them. We got the police department, the police ITE safety grant, uniform protective gear. So any number that's black right here as a header, I added those up the, the subtotals, and I can give you my sheet for now. And then I minus the one-time expenses which would be okay so the police rolling equipment um really skyrocketed yeah that's 
that one right there is the ARPA, we have $50,000 in ARPA dollars there allocated towards a new vehicle. And then we've seen wage or uh, fuel increases significantly. I think we went up That's quite true. a bit, 30% there just in fuel costs. Yeah, we had that on the Friday. I have that at home. Yeah, I think I was paying $20 a month or a week to drive up here. Now it's, I got up highest, was like $80. The police department in general, as far as their vehicles, has been a kind of a rolling catastrophe. You know, there's so it's, it's like basically since I've been here, one car a year kind of blown up. Oh, wow! You know, and, and the only reason that we're able to get cars at a reasonable price is that the police chief is an ex ISP chief who stays in touch with the ISP and Boise, and they tell them when there's a vehicle that's they're taking out of service and we get it for a good price, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but part of this ARPA money was to at least try to update that, that fleet so that we didn't have that problem, uh, which I think is, we thought was the right thing to do. I think it's the right thing to do. Yeah, that'd be embarrassing <laughs> if he's on a, like that chase the other day. We were at Muggsy's when it happened. Oh, the? The, the, the slow, the low speed chase we called Yeah, that. so we, we had a council meeting that night. Let's do it. the car go by with one car and then the car goes by with two cars and the car goes by with three police cars behind it. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. So, so your question, sorry. It, 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 it still seems um, a bit high. The budget seems high still on the police um, line. So yeah, so we have... I mean, because your budget, the, the budget for 23 is 800, sorry, the budget's 841,700. Right, so we saw again large increases in our fuel budgets. It, it wasn't that bad. Your fuel went from twenty eight thousand actual for twenty twenty two, and you're budgeting thirty six thousand. That's very reasonable, and I don't see any issue yeah, there. But if you get down to police equipment, you have twenty eight to thirty six, and then you go down to SRO. See, so you, you know, you'll see. Well, here on the SRO, a big jump was the health. What is entry, SRO? The state resource officer or the like a school resource officer not state resource. health and life insurance is twenty five thousand. Yeah. Now the insurance, your medical insurance went off. That went up because we went from um, an officer who only had insurance on himself to an officer who had insurance on his family. So that that money shifted into this area. Um I'm thinking what I could do is pull up our, our budget workshop discussions where we went through and looked at some across the board changes. So wages went up a certain amount. Um, like I said, it, it was a, a flat amount of dollar an hour per employee or their salary, $2,080 went up. Uh, and so that's reflected in here, but it gets spread out over those respective wages. You know, on um, so I'd have to look at how she did that, how the court treasurer did that. Okay, so your fire um, budget went up basically sixteen, basically seventeen thousand. That's reasonable with um, wages, uh, fuel, you know. So I don't have a problem with your budget on fire. So um, okay, then we. Go I didn't even know you had an animal control officer. I don't, do we have any budget for it? It's purchase services, so oh, yeah. they so hire we, that out. We contract it to the animal shelter. Oh, okay. All right. So I'm on page eight, just in case anybody asks. <laughs> Compensated leave. Hmm. Compensated leave is uh, the amount of time, so if somebody has if they accrue certain time and our hours for pay time off, or we have a sick bank time as well that has a value to it upon separation, we have to put it in there as a potential liability if they were to separate. And they like well, if quit, they gotta pay out. Mm -hmm. So that one is one of those ones that we hope, we budget for it, but we hope we don't spend it. You know? The vacation time also falls into that. Yeah, we don't do vacation, we do PTO, pay time off. Okay. And so, and then they have an employee has the ability to do a sick bank account where they can take. They're allowed to accrue a certain amount of time, and once they hit that, they can't accrue anymore. They can take a portion of that time and put it into a sick bank, 
and if they have to take an extended leave, then they bank that time. You know, so it's kind of our um, short-term leave policy. They have a condition that causes them to be out for more than three days. Well, when we wrote the policy, there was some consternation over what the value of that would be at separation, and they ended up council ended up sort of landing somewhere um, in the, I wouldn't call it even in the middle, but giving it some value. They said upon separation, it's worth 25% of the hourly rate that they have. Okay. So so there's that value associated with that that we then we have to put as a liability. But if they um, if they leave and they don't have any time, then they don't have any value. So they can use that time theoretically if they are sick or have a doctor's note. So this doesn't have to do with your budgeting, but last year you spent a hundred thousand on capital outlay. I was just curious. And where? Um, page nine, the very last um, line on the top. Uh, street rolling equipment total. Yeah, that was our purchase. They leased a um, loader, and they put a hundred thousand dollars down in order to get the lease in a more affordable place. Right. So, so that streets? Yeah, yeah. Streets. So that's the loader. So, so a loader that this isn't the snow plow that everybody used ARPA funds for. No, the ARP no, we use ARPA dollars to cover that down payment, so we basically paid half of it off. Um, and then we leased it for five years at twenty thousand dollars a year. The um, snow plow, the snow blower, excuse me, is in um, the No remover, removal, which is 454,000. 11 11. I have gotten that. Yeah, you'll see 105,950 in the capital. Mm -hmm. so that's the simple. So when we passed, they passed a resolution that allocated the money into certain areas, and one of the areas that they allocated those dollars was into a lease auction here for the loader. And so they executed that last. So we did an appropriation piece on that. <laughs> That's okay. I just wanted to make sure when you asked that question, you knew where it was, where it was caught in the way. Okay, so the capital outlay under snow removal, this 105, yep. is the... That's a blower. Yeah. It's a it's a snow, blower. Snow blower, yeah. It's a big one that goes on the front of a, uh, that a is loader. Crazy. And it, what it does is it comes downtown, and in our other streets where you have your snow piled up in the center, and they run down and blow it into the back of a dump truck. Oh, oh yay! Because our streets are so narrow. Uh, so that's so we right now we use it downtown, and the and the reason we only use it downtown is because the old blower was so poorly held together that we were too it was too risky to take it out of downtown because we don't have anywhere so there's no downtown so the hope is is that as this new one gets used more we can start going down some of our other streets as well that are narrow where do you take the snow they have a spot over by the railroad mm -hmm. uh, tracks there off of that street okay you see a big pile over there okay. oh on that island no it's actually just between ash street and the railroad there's a they don't dump problem. it in the creek no, we're not allowed to. Probably can't do that. Oh, okay. DEQ yeah, won't let us. Roads, roads all. Yeah, yeah. roads all. And oh. Yeah, we're on. Yeah, we're on they used to do that, but they don't do it anymore. Our, our Dove Road has a bridge that goes over Meadow Creek, and they're such a stickler. Yeah. Okay, so for streets, you increased 24%. Um, actuals last year was 430, this year's 570. But that 570 budget deducted the. It's going to deduct anything that's a capital outlay. But why is it still increasing by 139,000? So that again is where the 25% you said. It was a 24% increase. So 12% of that is insurance, likely. Uh, and then we saw they are one of our lower paid employees, so they're going to see with that one dollar an hour raise. Two thousand dollars, two thousand eighty is going to be a higher percentage of their wage. So you're going to see some of that coming up. And then the other ones that we looked at, we uh, we really have to get to a place where we're funding street maintenance at about three miles a year of chip sealing and asphalting, not separately but combined. 
in order for us to get there, we have to sort of incrementally grow uh, our maintenance plan. So we, you saw us look at investing in some of those areas as well. Otherwise, what happens is, is our seven year turnaround on our roads will turn into more like a 10 or 15 turnaround that each road gets touched. So, and that came at the recommendation of our contract engineer who helped us develop a long range transportation plan and some of the recommendations. So we're gonna slowly kind of creep that budget up. We also seen oil <clears throat> is gone up dramatically. So you see us, you know, hedging our bets there that we can um, budget high and come in low if prices drop. But right now when we set the budget back late, late August, it was still pretty high. Mm -hmm. so. Your supplies all doubled in your budget except for street rolling equipment. Right, because right, right. we're not increasing our equipment costs. We're only, we only have a lease option. Right now, so. so that visitor center costs that much to keep it going? That's, that was an area we looked at, is there a way we can get that out from underneath our management? And every time you go around and around and around with it, it's same with the golf course, that it, it's, there's not an easy solution we'll go with that. I don't think- That's I, not don't, bad. You budgeted 27140 right? And most of that is going to be supplies and contracted services. Yeah. But yeah, why yeah. are you not renting the building and um, I actually have been there when I was at the library meetings and people were constantly wanting to come in and see the store. Yeah, so uh, we looked at trying to get the chamber involved mm -hmm. and working on that, but the chamber is just not John as working. John Becker's here for the 4.30 meeting. Oh, is he? Yeah. So it's just such a bummer you can't get a volunteer in there that, and then the revenue Morning. comes back in, right? Yeah, it's just, again, one of those things for us we could, if we could find a revenue stream. Uh, I'm John Becker. I, I put a quarter machine on the door right. for the bathroom. John, oh, oh. John, Steve, you're Steve. Yeah, I've met you before, I think. I'm Lisa. Lisa. Nice. And I'm Linda. Hi. Adrian. Adrian. We started at four. Sorry, that's fine. Okay, I'll I just want to kind of catch up. I, okay. We're on page thirteen. But but I, we're talking a little bit about some of our our costs associated with some of the functions that we offer. One in particular is the is the visitor center. You know, we, we met with the um, Sandpoint CEO of the chamber down there to see if she could help come up and get the um, chamber more organized up here. You know, we're always looking at ways to be resourceful and use the facilities that we have in a new way or a different way that help generate some of that income, but nothing seems to be really taking off. Department of Labor right now is in there two or three days a week, and they operate the mobile um, Workforce training, whatever, out of that, uh, there, like I say, two or three days a week. And you're not renting it? We do rent it. Oh, it okay. It's rentable, but okay. it's not renting enough. Okay. You know, and, and our fees, you know, they're they're not, and one of the challenges is the cost to rent that is expensive right now. Mm -hmm. I think it's somewhere around $100, I have to go look, uh, per incident. So if you yeah, want to go rent expensive. it, it's expensive. So for the average person, yeah. yeah. So you just don't see a lot of people using it, but you can see it, it used to us. be free. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it wasn't really free. Mm -hmm. Recording. Okay. I love the visitor center bathrooms being available, being a real estate agent. Yeah. You know, oh, you I got a bunch of people in the car, and I'm like, okay, we're going to the visitor center. Yeah, bathrooms. and it's usually they do, they do a good job. You know. And it's a nice one. Yeah, it's nice. Nicer than the super long grocery stores. <laughs> so, John, we're just going through. You got a copy? Yeah. Okay, perfect. We're just kind of going through, and they're asking questions. Some of them I know answers to, and some of them I have to do a little bit more deep. Okay, so the economic development coordinator. Mm -hmm. I see his salary went up quite a bit. Yep, so that was based on the fact that our, um, so our actuals, we lost our coordinator for... It's page 15. Three or four months of that year, so they weren't they were, they weren't incurring the expenses. So I do have a concern about that because um, from what I was understanding when I was interviewing Dave Sims, you've got Kootenai Tribe, um, the school does not pay, and although they get voting rights, which I think is weird, um, Moye, you guys, and the county. Mm -hmm. And if you're, I mean, we, what? So the income, though, when you, so you have to compare so expenses and income. Our income comes in from those jurisdictions as well, but we house the, him as an employee of the city, so that way it's 
he's not being paid a check from everybody. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. so all the expenses is, are ours, but the income comes in and we build those, those respective agencies and departments. Okay. So if you go over okay. to revenue, the revenue side, you'll see. I was like, wow, he must have a nice paycheck. <laughs> <laughs> so you're saying the previous two years where you guys spent in wage um, only, Forty-four thousand for twenty-one and twenty-two, and then it skips to fifty-one thousand. You're saying that's because he didn't work a full year, right? He was only working part time. Okay, so and then and then we and left Dennis. He left early, mm -hmm. yeah. and so we have some. We had some time there. Or we had four months without a yeah, maybe four six. Months. And then uh, and then all of those wages are reimbursable through the state. So we file it for a grant and we get those reimbursed by the grant. So those, again, you have to look at the- wash it out. But I want to go back to the signature, if you don't mind. Um, Can you skip that one? Street maintenance. Yeah. Just swimming pool. 14. Right. 14. 14. Mm -hmm. So I know that you got 80,000 from the county, which, um, I thought it was interesting considering they weren't all county people swimming, but um, what what is your future plan if, if the city tax doesn't work? Because that's a good I question. do think that that pool keeps a lot of children out of trouble. I and I, I think that's a community question that needs to be asked. I think we need to have conversations around that. I, mean, I don't know the answer. I don't. What do you pick when you think about safety? Do you pick a police department versus a fire department versus a pool? They all serve a very you know, important purpose. Yeah, the kids have to learn how to I, swim with all the waterways around here. I don't know the answer, and it scares me, really, to okay. think that we might have to come to a place where we have to really make those hard decisions. Okay. So. And right now, we're. this is an area I'm proud to say, you know, even though we don't take in a lot of income, I'm, or we took in about 20000 last year in income, that... Uh, and so it is a quote drain on the gen on the tax dollars. So the tax dollars are subsidizing this, but we become really efficient in the way that we're hiring our lifeguards, training our lifeguards, and managing that pool. And we get a lot of grant money to help offset some of our capital investments. That pool, when we rebuilt it, we didn't spend a dime of tax dollars. Oh, we we are able to do it with grants and timber dollars that we raised um, through a sale. So, okay. you know. The, there are things that we can be really resourceful about, and then other things, just the, the funding ways that they come through, they have strings or you know, limits on what you can spend the money in and how you can spend it that makes it really hard. For example, you can't find money right now to go run a police department you know, for operation maintenance costs. It's getting really hard. You hear the governor you know, in his speech yeah, talk about say, yeah, he's funding police, it. but then I noticed today when I was listening to him, he was very specific. He said, we're going to fund, we're going to give raises to the state police department. So I was like, well, there you go. And he's getting yeah. careful about how he's wording that. So that shit doesn't want North Idaho. Anyway, so my point is, is that, that where we can find opportunities to align our need with, with funders, you'll see us do that. And my, my hope here, I call it my BHAG, big, hairy, audacious goal would be to look for an endowment mm -hmm. opportunity to pull open. Mm, that would be nice, a grant. Yeah. No, not just well, a grant, an endowment. Well, because the park endowment. and recreations, they just got some money, too. I think right. that's probably going to go to the skate park, right? right. So the, the endowment, it would be a fund that you basically can live off the interest to help keep the pool operating and then mm -hmm. um, tap into opportunities for improving the pool. Maybe it's growing, bit, you know, but at the most, if we can just get an endowment going, to keep that pool open, then we don't have to subsidize it. That would be, again, a BHAG. Long-term goal, if I say it outward, maybe the universe will align and we'll get there. That's, <laughs> that's how I live my life. Yeah, it's a wonderful thing to have. Explain to me on page 17, at the top of the page, total levy taxes. Mm -hmm. So is that income? Total levy taxes is property. Mm -hmm. So that's just your property tax income. Yeah. So that's the income. All right. Yeah, so in fact, the way that, that the clerk ran this report, I like to see revenues at the front and then expenses. But yes. she ran it where it was in the middle. So it's, it's, it's a little bit of a, of a... I'm really, 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 really surprised that you're budgeting... Um, you're saying that you're only going to get $29,000 more than you did last year. But you budgeted the same number last year. Yeah, so there was a, an issue with the clerk. Uh, so the governor, when he came out with the CARES Act funds and the ARPA dollars, in order for him to get to property tax relief, because they, those funds were specifically excluded from being able to 
get to property tax relief, he they passed uh, or he pushed the legislature to adopt this um, restriction that we weren't allowed to take the three percent rate uh, cope or not cope, what do they call it? Three percent uh, property tax increase. What do they call the it? The mail. No, the. Um, it's okay. Go on. My brain is done. I got my blood drawn today, and I think I got dumber. <laughs> <laughs> You're um, doing great. So the uh, so they so they didn't. We were not. We were able to budget. You'll see. Well, what you don't see is what we budgeted. What we budgeted. Oh yeah, no, you can't see that. And then the clerk failed to file a uh, report with the with the county clerk's office that Oregon. Excuse me. So that's the word I'm looking for. That put that three percent into Oregon. And so because we didn't pass that resolution, we lost it. Mm -hmm. And then and then the numbers came in last. That means people are, are falling, going into default on their taxes at this point. So you saw a twenty thousand percent that twenty twenty thousand dollar dip, and I'm guessing that's where that where that difference is. That's why we're forty thousand. So about twenty thousand was a three percent forward on that we did not take and did not place into forward on. Where are you showing that Lisa? So this is where we budgeted. But we did not take the three percent. And then the the actuals came in twenty thousand dollars less than. Well, I just know my mom lives in the Park subdivision, mm -hmm. and she's on the circuit breaker program. She only lives in Social Security. Mm -hmm. Originally, a couple years ago, she paid four hundred thirty-six dollars in taxes. Yeah, and I think the last two years, it was eight. It was double eight hundred and eighty or something like that. So, so what we're not. Gonna, and we could eventually get into this as talk, talk get into the weeds about how property taxes are assessed. The cities don't get, get we don't get a say in how property taxes are assessed. That's at the assessment level, uh, the assessor. So I will tell you that what you are seeing in increases where people are seeing 20, 30% increases in their property taxes aren't necessarily tied to budget. They're tied to a shift that's happening at the assessment level. And what's happening is commercial properties are being assessed less. Right. Some residential properties are shifting. So if you think about it as pie, the pie is just sort of shifting and who's paying for what. It's only theoretically growing by the maximum amount that we're allowed to, to do or not do if we choose not to take it. But it, it theoretically is only allowed to grow 3% or maximum 8% plus new construction. And we've never gotten even close to 8% on any of our new construction. We maybe see that's another challenge that we've had with the assessor uh, was new construction not hitting the tax rolls sometimes for, for years. Yes. Years <laughs> Why was that? Well, you'd have to ask him. I'm not here to speak for him. Or now it's she. So she. I mean, as a real estate agent, I, I was doing the um, invoicing for North Bend Fire Department because I, I, I was on the board. And so I would have to determine, I would see the mailing address and, and the property address the same and yet the county is showing it as vacant land. I'm going, come on now. Yeah. They wouldn't have their mail going to a vacant land piece. They've got to be living there. Well, I can tell you in my conversations, and these are just the verbal conversations I had with the former assessor who just left in January, that they're required by law to go out and physically view property with every five years. And if it's a not if it's a new construction and not a single family home, then it would be depending on where they are in that rotation, it wouldn't hit the tax rolls until they went out and right. reviewed them. So, so, um, so like four and a half years later, they get out to a particular property, and meanwhile, you're losing the revenue. Yeah. Meanwhile, that revenue is shifted too, right? Because they're not paying for proportionate share, so more people are paying more for that. So, you know, Patty's house, she has a huge house. Mm -hmm. It's basically mostly done, except for the basement and some trim work and stuff. She's gone to the county over and over again saying, hey, you're still charging me just vacant land price. I'm living at the house. You know, when are you going to charge me the tax All right, bill? So it's a county issue. Then. Yeah, we don't have any control over right. it. Right. Uh, and I do feel like, it, in, the, in it's a particular, yeah, and that was one of our big pushes with when we met with the, so Urban Renewal is another one where we get revenue from uh, increment on tax on uh, property tax but it's usually for commercial properties and you're seeing in some cases when I did an evaluation of the base rate from the day they started it to when I took over administration in year 11 that we actually saw outside of if you take the properties out that saw new construction on them we saw a decrease of something close to 20 percent of commercial values across all commercial land 
So what does that mean? That means that money that's still needed to operate to provide police, fire, streets, you know, parks, etc., is now shifting onto a different tax base. So I'm really hoping that the new assessor understands the implications of that, but I think it you kind know, of takes informed citizens too. So. Okay. Cable franchise. Building permits, they're going to so be an in and an out. We're going to look at that one pretty closely when you look at planning and zoning fees. We have a building, our building department fee. And if we're not bringing in enough to cover our expenses, you'll see us increase our rates. We usually look at that once or twice a year to kind of gauge to see how we're doing. And, you know, theoretically, that's a service that the fee should cover it. So how come you guys didn't increase the budget for your traffic grant safety? That's an in and an out. Um, so they put a flat amount of $10,000 in an income. It's a grant that's done through the state for them to go out and do enforcement to pay for overtime. And if you look at what we receive in expenses and in income, those should be matched pretty closely. So they, they usually don't know what the year's gonna be like. That's a huge question. I don't mind taking it to them, but they just put a flat amount, 10,000 in each year. So okay, so you're taking that from him. All right, and then economic development coordinator, you budgeted 70. So that's um, that's spent a lot less, but you're, you gave him an increase because now he's full time, right? Full time, he's benefits too. Right. Benefits. No, he does not. What is his wages? Good question. I don't know. I'd have to, I could find out. Okay. If you don't mind. Yeah. So I just want to make sure this is his whole budget right here, right? Because that's, that's the revenue. That right. For everything when he goes on trips, dinner parties, whatever. So your your liquor tax the last two years you brought in much more than what you budgeted for. Yeah, and you'll see us always be conservative here. We're gonna again we're gonna try to balance budget on expectations that we're gonna get less revenue, and that forces us to tighten our belt, so to speak. Uh huh. That's just a it's a policy that the council has consistently a um, practice, and any money that comes in in excess covers any overages that we might did that dissipate that year, and anything outside of that we use towards our rainy day fund, which we call contingency. And seeing that COVID was great for liquor sales. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so sales tax significantly higher significantly. Than, than what you budgeted. And, and, and that, that makes me it puts my guard up when I look at this PowerPoint and I see that you're budgeting really high on your expenses and then you're budgeting really low on your income, making the picture look a whole lot worse than it really is. Well, again, a part of our fiscal conservativeness is to try to anticipate worst case scenario for revenue and worst case scenario for expenses so that we're forced to tighten our belts. So we're forced to look at balancing. We have to balance. And so it gets hard. Right, that's where we start. We stop giving employee raises, and where we don't, um, you know, in, we maybe shed some of the employee benefits back onto the employees. It, it really forces us to get out in the belt tightening area pretty tightly. And that I, I understand what you're saying, but I also feel like it's a good practice. I think for most. Agree. So, like, if know, I was putting your budget together and I saw. You brought in 287 two years ago, and you brought in 305k last year. And I know we're going into an economic downturn. Then I would have budgeted probably 275. Yeah. And I because we have more people here now than we did. But again, five this years this ago. revenue isn't based on the number of people. As our population actually went down by the last census, believe it or not. The city did. The city did. But the county went up. The county went up, but the city went down. Mm -hmm. And this amount is based on a population. Uh, that the state uses an algorithm. So for us, uh, this 300,000 that we brought in this last year was like awesome, right? Because all of a sudden now, where we were blowing expenses and um, budgets for fuel and equipment and vehicles, we're now able to breathe a little easier. But, you know, our concern was, and then we talked, so we budgeted 250, 
um, our thought was conservatively was to go into that knowing we're going into an economic downturn, but we budgeted 50,000 higher than the year before, with the idea that maybe we'll find middle ground. I mean, it's a guessing game, and you know, obviously, the the better off, better you're at it guessing and estimating, um, you know, the tighter you can get, and how you want to balance your, I mean, so how then, you want to balance your budget. But for us, that that's how we did it. We did it fiscally conservatively. So then, on the highway user fee, um, you budgeted less, just by a couple thousand. For 23, the new the new budgeted for 22. I thought that was kind of strange. Yeah, so brought in 197. Yeah. So here's the reason why that that amount of money, about forty thousand dollars of that was surplus eliminator funds. So if there's not a surplus, we don't get them. And that came in the form of the government, with the governor allocating it through LTAC, which means it's a 60-40 split between the state. So it's transportation. like a transportation. It's so whatever money's left over at the end. They, they, the legislature has to decide how they're going to disperse it. Well, they took a lump sum amount of money and put it into transportation, and they give it to the state and LTAC to divvy up, and then they divvy it up. So that forty thousand dollars that's in there, we might not get this next year because there might not be a surplus. So you can't always anticipate that there'll be a surplus. Isn't the governor sitting on a billion dollar surplus? But not, not all of it might go to transportation. So it's a matter of how. The legislature decides to allocate those funds. So, I mean, for us, we're looking at it going, yeah, there's, there, there, maybe there'll be a good chance we can get those dollars into transportation, but we can't always assume that that's the case. So, we'll go back just a minute to, to your question about a certain amount of budget, you know, but maybe there is not as bad as it looks. And I would certainly hope that's the case. You know, I would hope that what we're telling you, you know, is that we have a $450,000 shortfall. Maybe it isn't four hundred fifty. You know, I would, I would hope that that's the case, but I think she's right in saying that. You know, if we budgeted and said we've only got a three hundred fifty thousand dollars shortfall and it's four hundred fifty, then ten times worse than going the other way. Well, I, 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 my sense as being a citizen is that fear porn has been um, coming from this office, saying that. Oh, well, you either um, allow us to increase sales tax 1% or we're going to increase your property taxes 63%. And I just feel like that. No, we can't do that. Well, that's what, that's no, those, what those, it those, is those, being no, printed those, out no, on no, stuff. No, 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 those are the options. Yeah, those are just things Either one of those options is a vote of the city. And it's a two-thirds majority for the increase in sales tax, the 60% majority, the increase in or, property tax. And sixty percent majority for the one percent. You know, so, so it, it's still a vote. It's not like we can just say we're going to do that. We can't do that. Right. I saw that. I was like, oh, good. So we're <laughs> just presented <laughs> options at this point. Yeah, I think it's a technical discussion. I think the other options. The point is, is at some point you have to say what are the options, and we have to have a dialogue about that. We can't avoid some of the words because of that. The idea of it being fear based. I admittedly, we're all humble and. And council and saying to staff that we're not here to necessarily tell you what we're going to do. We want to hear from the community based on the circumstances that we're in. And admittedly, you know, for us, we're going to be fiscally responsible, uh, fiscally conservative each budget year. We're not. You're probably not going to see us deviate from that unless we get more sophistication in the way we can budget. I think my biggest problem is is this isn't a one year issue. This is I only have data for three years, and it seems like it's actually been going on for three years. And I'm wondering who's who's holding the person accountable for all this? Yeah, so the, the I, that's a question I need to understand a little bit more what your concern is because I, I can't, when you look at our actuals and our revenue and our expenses and our audit usually gives us a good sense for where that lands, um, we actually were on a trajectory of saving money. So we were actually growing our contingency, which means anything that we you know had at the end of the year got siphoned off into our rainy day fund. And we were seeing, you know, twenty, thirty thousand dollar increases each year. So right. to me, I look at that as that wasn't the problem. The problem really is now with this court case being, you know, determined and our attorney advising us, we now can't we we're losing a source of revenue and we have to decide how we're gonna move forward this year and 
any future year. But, but going backwards. But that that court case wasn't the reason why you were completely four hundred fifty thousand in the hole. No, it was. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're saying yes. it yeah. was. Absolutely. So when you say there are a lot of revenues, you're talking about the date of the court case. Mm -hmm. And we didn't find out about this court case until August. August of this year. After you've been swimming for a while. <laughs> Much. Well, so yeah. the way so it came out, okay. oh, so the way it came out was we um, were working through a cost of service analysis with our utility department, our electric utility, and as part of that, we looked at a, a rate classification based on the amount certain customers have on an entire system and what their allocation amount of the system is. And in doing that, we have one particular rate class that has our, our largest customer, and it happens to just be one, and. They contended and pushed back on us about that general fund transfer, and we pushed it back onto our council that we had on contract to evaluate that, and they came back and told us, yeah, uh, after review of this, it doesn't look like we can do it. And my response was, well, if we can't do it for them, we can't do it for any of them. So what, so, what are you gonna do as far as people that have been paying that electricity cost? Are you gonna keep their cost at the same amount? So the city, um, will and has when we were going through our coast and we weren't quite done with it and when we learned of this court case and the implications of that we went back to the design team that was helping us look at our allocation amount and we put that money back in is in the electric department there was 229,000 ish dollars that are going back into that utility fund in just rates and then there were other amounts that were interest on loan so we put our money in state pool and we received interest on that money and they were that money will also go back into that utility. So when you add up water, sewer, electric, plus the interest on, on the bonds and the other money that we have in savings, that's what adds up to 450,000. All of that will go back into the utilities and we will use that for a couple reasons. One, a couple ways, I mean, one would be holding rates down. Right now, I don't know if I was who I was talking to, but we saw in our electric department for a transformer, so when we put a, uh, a, new sub, a new subdivision goes in or whatever and we go in and put transformers in a transformer is meant to serve some of them are meant to serve about three homes off of them we saw that cost went from about fifteen hundred dollars to five six thousand dollars right. per unit so when you start looking at those costs it, it becomes an, you know we're basically subsidizing that cost by only taking in fifteen hundred so um, we knew that our costs were going to go up and we couldn't necessarily raise our rates equitably in that same way. So we opted for a five-year transition of equitability across our rate payers of 5% with that money going back in instead of a double digit hit when we saw record inflation even greater than, than the 9% average across the country. We were seeing 25, 30, 50%, 100% increases in some areas. And a lot of that we, we attributed to the issue with um, the Chinese not being able to ship goods in, and some of a lot of that electrical equipment was tied to that, and so we saw those spikes. We expect and we anticipate that those costs will come back down, but not necessarily back to the level that they were uh, before. So we took a, a less aggressive approach and put that money back in. We also are doing some pretty aggressive capital planning improvements in the electric con uh, department that those go in and will keep our ability to make those investments without having to take rate increases. So we'll probably see it take a modest rate increase matching. Council adopted a resolution that they were going to match the rate increases with inflation, whatever the CPI was, um, and that they would consider that each year. And this year, we took less than that because that money was going back in. And we'll continue to look at that each year. Did you look at those questions? Yeah, I tried printing it again. Well, we could just, yeah. Read them off, I guess. I could put them on, on the um, screen too. So dealing with that balance, that was actually the number one premise of my entire purpose of being here. I've actually seen the budget quite a few times and okay. a lot of issues with the rest of this. Um, I just don't quite. So so we had a budget that a lot of for four hundred fifty thousand dollars in extra from the utilities, and you're putting that back in, which I understand and hoping that that will compensate for repairs or increased costs, obviously. Or, like or just less rate increases, um, yeah, holding our rates. But 
in theory, that same increase should be generating that same four hundred fifty thousand dollars in surplus so next that's the year. That's part I didn't understand what you were saying. About, so maybe I need you to explain that theory. Well, I mean, if it, so if it made four hundred fifty thousand dollars in addition this year, and you are already factoring in your rate increase, then I mean, you're not going to see a four hundred fifty dollar increase in outgoing expenses for next year. So you've already got the four hundred and fifty dollars or thousand surplus for this year, and now you're looking at another four hundred fifty thousand surplus. No, we're not ish. taking it this year. So this budget year is not taking a four hundred fifty thousand general fund transfer. Right, but business. the electrical, the utility fund is yeah. getting that back. Yeah. So now the utility fund has an extra four hundred fifty thousand, and next no, year. No, well, that's a that's a total of all three accounts: water, sewer, electric. It's two hundred twenty-nine. Okay, issues. utility fund, but the utility fund is seeing that four hundred and fifty thousand surplus. Right, and and with that, what we did instead of we could have held and not taken any rates, but council decided to take the five percent rate, knowing that we were seeing great increases, and then we need to go back and look because next year, if our revenue is such and our capital planning is such that we don't need to take any rates they increases, they won't. They'll hold those. And in the electric department, for nine years, they didn't take a rate increase. Nine straight years, they did not take even a cost of, uh, or a CPI rate increase. And so we have been playing catch up from that because that compounding error has caused us to have to push out really aggressive capital planning that we need to do in that electric department. So for example, this year, where we just finished the resurfacing of the hydro, that was about a $4 million job, that we got a bond for that. Mm -hmm. uh, and we had to take a rate increase. We had to take a 9% rate increase in order to even afford to pay the bond. And then um, uh, we are going through a complete rehaul of our uh, automation system out there because we've learned that it's end of life ended a couple years ago. So we're running on antiquated uh, electronics that, have, that can't be, firmware updates can't be done and um, we're, we're struggling in that regard. So, that we ended up going out and getting a grant from the state to help subsidize that cost. That's about a half a million dollar job, but that 229 that's coming back in will help make sure that project can be successful. And then of course, when you go buy a, an electric rig with a boom on it, each one of those rigs is $250,000. So, and we try to stage those out so that we don't, we can take like I say modest rate increases and not have to do lump sum and try to raise a lot of revenue over a short period of time. and then. So you don't end up having rates that do this, you have rates that kind of stay level, more level. So the cost of running the electric company, like he was saying, can't you um, reduce some things now that you're getting an extra 450,000 in there, can't you reduce some things and then, and then that way the money can be over here if it's needed? You know what I'm trying to say? Well, I think like so if you know you're going to buy a boom. I, 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 there's just a couple things here. You know, I, I think your question and, and your question is similar. In that, okay, so there's this extra money over there because we're not taking 5% for the general fund. Right. But what we looked at is we needed to actually increase the rates roughly 10% to match inflation. We didn't increase them 5%. Probably more so, actually. You know, so it's not like we said, okay, we'll leave it at 10%. We'll have an extra two hundred twenty-nine thousand in electric, and an extra two hundred twenty-one thousand in water and sewer. We didn't do that, you know. So the, the the extra money I think you're referring to isn't really there. So you're basically just saying that there would have been a substantial rate increase this year, but now you're just not. We're because, taking. We're, uh, what we're trying to do is spread that out. So we had, as part of the cost of service analysis, looks at the equitability of each sector of. Um, class of service for each customer base and how much demand they place on the system. So we saw some issues across some equitability issues across those sectors. So we needed to make some changes there. And then we also saw increases. So we were looking at trying to take modest rate increases to get us over a five year term to a, essentially a balanced approach of what we looked at today or what it looked like. Today. answer to your other question, which is like, we've got the money there. Why can't we move it over here? I'm not saying move it. I'm just saying. Well, that's like, what I think. Like read, read, uh, seriously, reduce. I mean that's the question I ask. It's it's a city money. It's all it's there. Yeah. It's I I disagree with the logic of the lawsuit. Absolutely, I just yeah exactly. Well, and, and we asked that question of our you know uh, uh, one of the representatives. You know why does the state have it that way? Why 
why can't we say we generated enough money over here with electric water and sewer to cover the general fund we want to use it that way we should be able to do that but that's not the way state allows it obviously the lawsuit supported that the legislating from the bench yeah reading into the lawsuit it's and it only applies to municipalities because exactly. if it was a private company exactly. they cannot or even a, a co-op yeah. it's different yeah. you know like yeah. northern lights yeah. is a co-op so they have different yeah. rules but because we're a municipality and we're using those it's almost like you have two several different businesses that you're running right you got your utility businesses or your enterprise businesses and you have to run them differently than you run your governmental service businesses and the transparency that has to be available and and, and not a moment so to be able to, to say what you're doing with that money is is higher than the typical private business and the typical uh, co-op so mm -hmm. you know and i i see I see what the mayor's saying. I also see the other side of that, you know, of, of a ratepayer who doesn't live inside city limits. Why should they be subsidizing the cost of taxable services? So you can kind of play both parts and see an argument in both. In the and regardless, the courts have now weighed in and they've given us that that direction, and we we really can't continue to make a liability of the city by by participating that way. So you know, that's why we're making the move. Does that make sense? Yeah, I understand that. I was just was trying to. I didn't realize. Well, whatever that. Uh, I didn't know how much four fifty of accounted to our total utility budget, and five percent, I believe, is what you just mentioned. Right. So, so if you're taking a five percent out of your ten percent projected utility increase, and then you're just right. balancing that out, because I look at it as, you know, if I have have two jobs and one of them is providing me an extra four thousand dollars a month and all of a sudden now I realize that I can't use that four thousand dollars a month to pay this part of my bills now all of a sudden I have four thousand dollars a month that is way more than what I needed for what it's it was intended to generate funds for yeah, right. yeah. and so I've got to like do I give that back to wherever it came from back to the taxpayers or does it Wait. I could see holding him you know, for a year for or you like said rainy days or pumping three water up to three mile and actually so that's fixing something. some of that problem, you know? Yeah, your piping, <laughs> so your that, piping is a problem too, right? Some of your piping is aging. Our sewer and water. Sewer especially. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So no, I mean, you're, you're right in some of those, those uh, you know, logics of like, well, how do you spend the money? And for us, we already had a pretty aggressive capital plan. So for us, it was really, in one sense, it was good because it allowed us to match what the state was giving us in tax or in grant dollars to do this project, which would have cost us a lot more money and the ratepayers more money. But the flip side of that is the other side, the other business that we run, the taxpayer services, is going to take a big hit. So right. you know, it, it's it's definitely a, a double-edged sword in some cases. So, okay. so I, I'm assuming that you guys, you know, do, did your due diligence, but the question still has to be asked. So have you looked at every outgoing dollar expense and where can we cut? Because um, that's what the yeah, taxpayers are going to be. So we went through those exercises with council early on when we learned about this. And my comment to them was you have to get familiar with every dollar where it goes and where it's coming from. And we went through a number of different exercises where we looked at where can we cut? And when you look at, and I could go through some of the cuts we made, um, even in this fiscal year, knowing, you know, we learned about the case, we'd already published the budget, but we also, after it was published, went in and said, okay, well, where can we look at cuts? And we said, all right, well, where we make investments, let's see if we can make efficiencies in that. So we looked at with our street department, ways that we could um, bulk buy, um, some oil and per other per like uh, we have some equipment that's similar to the county, so we're looking at all those avenues. But we already were doing that. So the problem is, when you're already there. How do you, you know, how do you keep doing that? And so they looked at um, uh, employee benefits. You know what do those look like, and where could you save money on maybe a different cost sharing program with the employees? Um, you know, we we went through a lot of different scenarios, and in the end, you know, you you definitely can get closer. Not get all the way. So, are we paying any association fees like the National Association of Cities or anything like that? Oh, we have a, a, I don't know what the fees are. It's a good question with the Association of Idaho Cities, but I don't know if we're already a member just because we're a city. But I don't, I don't know of any. I can look into it. So, are you um, in the Mayor's Association? I don't know. I don't think so. 
And what we do, um, the city has uh, participated if a employee has a credential that they are keeping up as part of their job, um, that they'll help pay for that cost. But it's we're talking a couple hundred dollars. It's, you know, it's not a huge amount. Yeah. Associated by those cities is whatever the fee is. Uh, it's one of those things that, from what I can see, is well worth every penny, whatever it is. The and ones the where we support that they give us and the information they give us and the opportunity they give us, uh, including the city administrator, to to kind of learn things has been pretty valuable from what I can see for the last three years. We do spend a lot of money in, in association fees in our utility funds, though, um, and I can sort of break down those costs. And those are uh, we buy and purchase power from EPA, and those. Uh, there are groups out there that negotiate on our behalf. The EPA? EPA, oh, EPA. Power okay. Initiative. So we generate about 20% of our power and the rest we buy from EPA. And with that uh, purchase, uh, we participate in associations that help advocate for when the rates, are, they come up every other year. So, but that, but that doesn't affect general fund. So. Okay, just from what I've seen so far, this is my recommendation. Lower the sales tax thing to half a percent instead of a one instead of a full one percent. And then you've got quite a few slush funds in here that are already over budgeted that you could take the extra two hundred thousand away from those and you will be balancing. And do you have any specific ones you're referring yes, to? Yes, absolutely. Sure. Mm -hmm. And if you wanted to get back on me too, if you wanted to. It's on page 29. Right now, you guys budgeted 2288000 Okay, you're in a different utility. You're in the enterprise funds. Okay. So it's general and admin. Yeah, on so. Page 29. So when you go back, so this is everything. This includes enterprise as well. So when you go back to. Charging Sorry. station. So page 21. Okay. Where it says electric fund. So anything that has a 5110 is going to be your enterprise for electric fund. And then when you get to sewer and water, it's going to have a different uh, four digit number. So as you go through here, you see 5110 dash whatever. But you guys are still coming up with the budget. But I'm saying that we're not allowed to use the money in general fund or in enterprise fund in general fund anymore. So we're not able to. We can't if we cut over in electric. It only cuts electric. It doesn't help the general fund. That's what this whole thing is about, anyways. You can't pull from those dollars. That's where that rollover was coming from. Okay, so if you go to page thirty, um, and that's why I wanted a chance to sit down and talk with you guys because this can be a lot. Well, to, try over my head, to try to uh, you know grasp and understand without a conversation around that. So Thank you. we appreciate it. Thank you, Linda. Um, okay, so so this is income related to um, to electric. All right, so so if you if you lower the budget under residential sales by 100k, it won't change anything in general fund. And then same with industrial sales by 100k. It won't change anything in electric or in uh, general fund. Okay, and then. So then we go, the next uh, group is it's either water or sewer. Uh, page 27, we have another slush fund of 800000 Okay, but again, let me, let me just get this. So water, four digits, 5210. And then sewer is going to be. This is sixty-two thousand under general admin. What's the first four digits? Six three. Zero, 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 zero. But there's it should be five one one zero. You're on page thirty-seven, well, right? Maybe fifty-two ten. So that's water. Yeah. So that's water. Page twenty-seven. Thirty-seven. Oh my gosh. Thirty-seven. Yeah. So that's going to be water. So that's a water slush fund. Where, at 
line. Expense account sixty-three thousand. Oh, sixty-three, six hundred thousand. Oh, six hundred. And you're saying what now? Okay, so you have a slush fund of eight hundred thousand. Well, that's contingency, so that's our reserve. I understand, yeah. and and it's good you have that. Yeah. I'm just saying that if you decrease the sales tax by half a percent. But it can't, I can't affect, it won't change this. It doesn't change that. That's a separate it's not account. Part of the general. Remember we talked That's about. That's where we've been pulling money from, it's from those types Well, if you look at, you'll, there'll be a general fund transfer. If you look under 5210, So just, you know, two thirds of the way up that section, it says general fund transfer. You'll see that we are anticipated $70,000 transfer that won't happen this year. We've got to have about 15 more minutes and then we got to open up for council if that's okay with you guys. You can, I don't mind sitting back down with you guys, honestly. I appreciate the chance to talk. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we talked, Linda, about our general funds. We operate that as a separate business in our enterprise funds. And the enterprise funds are going to be your water, sewer, electric. And those are also in there. This budget is for everything. And so we didn't get to that kind of structure. We talked a little bit about it at the beginning. I said, maybe I should go through and lay out the structure of this. We didn't get a chance to really talk about it. We kind of launched into questions. So, so when we look at um, general fund, general fund's going to be 1000 Anything with a 1000 in front of it is going to be general fund expenses or revenue. 5110 electric, 5210 water, sewer, and 53, or excuse me, water, 5310 will be sewer. What sewer? 5310. So it's going to start on. Forty something. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then that brings us to uh, what's fifty four ten? Um, fifty. I think it's garbage. Garbage. Yeah, garbage. <laughs> when you said garbage, I thought. Oh, yeah. I didn't mean, so we, you actually meant cash, okay. Yeah, 5410. So that's also one of those That's also enterprise. enterprise, yeah. All right. And then the next one then is... So this next page after that is the group summaries. So it's going to be kind of a culmination of some of those other breakout ones. All right, so then that's where I had this. Oh, okay. I should probably get these questions. Why does it take us so long for the issue to surface? I, did I answer that adequately? Yeah, okay. Uh, we learned about it this year from attorneys that we hired on the Mariposa. Who are responsible for the oversight and how will they be held accountable? I think well, inevitably it's going to be your leadership. You know, who are they're responsible it's, for? It's, you know, <laughs> it's going to be all the leadership, the council okay. and the staff. Um, and I wouldn't call it an oversight. It was more of a learning. <laughs> Um, an enlightenment, we'll call it. What liabilities exposure does the city have for overcharging power, water, sewage, and waste since 2017? That's a question we've asked our attorney that. Um, that I don't have a good answer for you today on that one. Um, that might be something that we have to have her respond on. Okay. How and when are the excessive charges for power, water, sewage, and waste going to be returned to the public? Again, we're, we've already done that. We, we're not taking those those transfers so they're going back into those accounts and they'll be used either to keep rates lower or to pay for our capital plans. Um, and then regardless of the source of replacement funding, what adjustments we made, and we talked a little about how to reduce profit in these departments. So profit being in um, uh, quotations that, you know, the city's not allowed to actually run a profit. So for us, we are allowed to pay for what we have and, and a replacement cost of that. So those contingency accounts are essentially become our replacement cost. So when we think about what our value or asset of that utility, so sewer for example, it's probably in the hundreds of millions of dollars. <clears throat> so we look at an $800,000 contingency, it's maybe one project away from being bankrupt. Okay. So. And then was there one more um, regardless? Oh, that's one I just did. Oh, sorry. Be to the, the budget documents may not be able to. Okay. Okay, so and I put those on comment. Okay. Okay, so my understanding is you guys didn't get your three percent increase on your property taxes. We we did not take it last year. This year we took it. Okay. So 
you if if you were to increase sales tax by half a percent then that increase in property taxes that you're going to take this year to me will help fill that gap yeah as assuming, well as yeah. assuming that we keep ahead the, of inflation tightening the budget and things like that so yeah, I don't. I don't think it's right to just skip to a full one percent increase in sales I think tax. I like where you're going with this, and I think looking at both options of saying, well, what does a half a percent look like, and what does a one percent look like, and and then go out to the community and get feedback. You know, do a feedback loop on that to say, well, you know, we could do half a percent, and you know, what are our S so obviously four hundred fifty thousand dollars is hard to come up with each year through grants and stuff, and the county was gracious this year to help us, and aren't going to be able to do that in the future, which that puts some of our services in question, right? Especially the pool. Um, then the other challenge is how do you, you know, we are going after grants for some of our operation expenses, but those come few and far between. And if you get a chance to work in some of the granting uh, agencies, they don't usually cover operation expenses. It's usually for a fixed cost of a capital project. So, but we're always looking for operation expenses. So we can continue to, to strive to try to find money to help uh, offset our capital expense or our operating expenses, but that just means that we're leaving less on the table to improve. So if we need to rebuild a road, we're not going to be able to really find extra money out there for that. So there's gives and takes, but I think if we look at both of those options and say what would a property tax increase look like and what would a, at um, maybe something smaller than 63 percent and a half a percent, can we get there with again tightening the belt? I think those are all there. Yeah, you, you talked about tightening the belt and, and you know that came up to me you know what, what can you do you know to not spend so much and, and I've only been at this for three years but three years I've seen every effort is being made in, in every department to you know operate efficiently and, and you know to really stay within budget and, and it hadn't been easy it's, it's really been difficult um, I don't think these guys are getting paid enough for what they do. Agreed. They, they take on today's pay scale. Yeah. You know? um, so keeping them here is important. You know, and, and struggle with that every year. I mean, how, how much do you pay a guy? And you, you know, how do you how do you get the money, particularly in the general fund? When you know, every time you give somebody a raise, you're asking it to come from somebody else's pocket. You know, I mean, we exactly. recognize yeah. that good help and efficient help. Is hard to find, and it needs. Sometimes it needs to be cultured. We, need to, we, need to, we, we do need to remember, though, that there are many people in our community that have not gotten a raise. So my husband yes. works up at the ports, and so he's a GSA, and he got a forty cent raise, yeah. which was kind of not really going to cover anything, right? right? Yeah, and and I think that that's a fair point. And mm -hmm. I think you know, if you I I try to go out once a week or so with the police chief, and we drive around and we talk to people, and we get out and you see the way people are living and you know the effects of any kind of rate increase inflation itself is a killer right mm -hmm. it's one of the most I would think unfair things that can happen is that your dollar doesn't go as right. far um, but I have I have um, talked to people that work within the city um, and you know as far as city employers mm -hmm. or plea excuse me and they seem to be taking it very offensive to those who feel like they didn't deserve a raise either so it's I think you guys are not a yeah. really complicated situation to, uh, uh, you know, make everybody happy. Yeah, I think the, the key point is, is you that... You ever make everybody happy. <laughs> no, is that true. every dollar you pay more... I learned that with the library. <laughs> and I think as long as you're humble and realize that, that you tend to make more empathetic decisions, right? We know that that costs... Yeah, I mean, I can look at these numbers and I can tell you guys aren't spent thrifts, all right? So I'm not saying that that you are, but I also understand how you budget conservatively which is the way I would budget as well I think some of the lines are a little bit too conservative in the budgeting like on the fuel tax you're only budgeting 125,000 but again yeah. remember that some of that surplus limit we don't get we don't get that every year in fact we've been lucky the last two years to get it but but your actuals was 191,000 year before was 159 so I would think yeah, right. you're definitely going to get what you had in 2021. Well, this also had surplus eliminator in it. I don't know how much. I think it was somewhere around 26. So, you know, you okay. were talking about the half percent or one percent, you know, and, and we tried to get some people some idea of what's that going to do? You know, what's that going to bring us? And 
Uh, quite honestly, it, it's a guess. It really is. Is it half a percent enough? I don't know if we know because we don't know what we're going to get out of it. Well, the neat thing about what we'll say. It's one percent too much. Maybe it is. You know. So the question is, what do you, what happens if you go one percent and you have excess? And I think the neat thing about the statute is it says that any money that we you that we receive in excess of what we plan to use, we can put towards property tax relief. So you can't even get a survey of what taxes have. We can get it from the county, and so not get, from the state though. No, we can get it. From the state at the county level, and then right. we have to extrapolate from that um, what the what we think is inside city limits and what we it, think it's is a outside. it's an educated guess, it's a good guess. Right, I know in her guess. PowerPoint she said one percent would get half a million, five hundred thousand. Yeah, so uh, so I'm thinking that if you did half a percent, that's two hundred fifty thousand. Then I feel like, well, like I called the casino, I said, "What's your occupancy tax?" And they said thirteen point four percent. Then I called Dodge Peak Lodge and I said, what's your occupancy um, tax? And he said, well, I, all I can tell you is we had a $238 night and we charged, and I don't remember the number, it was like $19 or something. So it worked out to be 8% for the room tax Which is there. kind of crazy because it's supposed to be 6%. The, the, the casino is an anomaly. We can't really take that into consideration because all that money stays. So, so my suggestion would be let's, Let's increase occupancy tax, you know, like to 12%, 10, 10 or 12%, because those are people coming to visit our county and on and the roads a, and things I like that. I appreciate that, that comment. And, that, and so I feel, I feel like there's little things we can do, little buckets we can come from to help fill in the gap. So, okay, I don't, I don't mind paying an extra half percent in sales tax. Um, so we got, what do we have inside city limits? We have Kumi. Valley Motel, right? I'm just gonna call that. We've got Idaho Carriage Hatch or something. I don't think that was on the motel. That, that cottage. It used to the be cottage the cottage. Inn. Yeah, I call it the cottage inn. The one right across from Safeway. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Um and we have the north side bed and breakfast. Dodge Peak Lodge. No, it's not inside City Limits. It isn't? No. no. Seriously. Well, well, right. That's the street yeah. Oh, that's the street Oh, La Brasse Road is where City ends. So here's, oh my so gosh, here's we have three, three motels. motels. And so how much of that would generate, I mean, even if you went, and I'm fine, I think 12% seems to be the whole sample, just that's 14%. I was going to say 14, yeah. yeah. Uh, we could look at that, but this, this is a small amount that it's going to hit, so it's worth looking at for sure. So we don't generate any revenue from the casino? No. Mm -hmm. no. Zero? It's tribal. Zero. Right. It's a tribal. separate country, honey. <laughs> yeah, but they're going to pay the county off for the travel in by giving a portion of their gas tax. So yeah, so there's a good chance that, that whatever we adopt here, and it sounds like they've already adopted their own tax that they charge over there, but the city doesn't see it. Do you think that the tribe... I, I hate to, yeah, could have a negotiation and say, look, the city's in trouble. Can um, can we start getting the money from the office? The tribal right. end said that they're going to pay a portion of their gas tax. I think that uh, I think that's that's always that's always <laughs> I mean, to ask. I mean, that's, that's, and then, that's, but that's it would be really good right. public um, persona yeah, for that to be in front page news I saying that the. the Hi, was gonna take the text. Yeah, the it feels nice from our side to ask them that, but the few times I've approached the tribe about those sorts of things, they're like most people. They're John, like, before we leave, did you have any other questions? No. That, no okay. Is there, and if there comes up any, you know how to no. get hold of me on Facebook, you're welcome to do that. Linda, I would appreciate a chance to maybe sit down with you again and go through some numbers if that works on half percent and other options, maybe 12%. Looking at options. Will, will, you, will you know your different income buckets? Mm -hmm. and, and I think that if we just do a little bit in a different area that, that we can come up with a solution. And I appreciate and the fact that you're thinking about this. I think the yeah. key thing about all of this is that not one person can come up with the solutions. It's really, it, it's gonna overwhelm one person and I can already tell you. It's oh, I'm already overwhelmed. That's why I called Lee <laughs> <Lydia>. I was like, <laughs> well, it, it, it's a I didn't know if you if you were uh, able to do this, but I was just yeah. like. Uh, so, so my point is, is that it, it, it's gonna take a village. And I appreciate the fact that you guys are taking the time out to come in today to talk with us, to see the problem as it as as we see it, and sort of you know, and try to see it from our perspective, and then we try to see it from yours, and we find some common ground on things that we can tighten our belt on. I'm, I think, any time at council would would love to hear opportunities where we can become more efficient. One thing we have to think about though is that we can't 
sometimes being efficient means investing. We have to invest mm -hmm. in better equipment, yeah. better yeah. resources. And I can tell you that of the dollars that council has invested based on my recommendation, we're dropping our budget for snow removal. We're dropping our budget for maintenance because we're going out one time instead of four or five maintenance times. Maintenance costs were, were off the chart. I, mean, mm -hmm. I think there was a neat machine we had up there was in the 60s. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. and trying to update that and, and, and then continue. Yeah, so, so some of this is about looking at ways to become efficient and reach, we invest sure. in those areas. So those are all obviously any time that we can sit down even yearly and go through some of my thoughts and get that kind of feedback loop from you guys. I'm thumbs up about that. Thank so. you both for your yeah. time and thank you for Xeroxing the budget and being so open. Yes, <laughs> yes.